Hello, keyboard cuties. Oh god, it's heavy. Oh, what we've got here today is the MM Studio Class 1800. Which, I mean, by its name, you can tell it is an 18, uh, 1800 layout that is inspired by the G80 1800. Uh, now, MM Studio is known for quite a few boards. They're known for the Class 60, the Class DKL, and these have all been uh, very heavy boards with a lot of brass in them that are very vintage inspired. And to date, all of their boards have been what I consider immensely good value. Now, the Class 1800 is a 1800 layout keyboard that has uh, a solenoid slash buzzer module. Uh, alternatively, you can get a knob, but uh, come on, solenoid slash buzzer. Uh, it's a very, very heavy board. Uh, comes in at over 4.2 kilos, and it comes in at $345 uh, without a plate or about $360 with a plate. Uh, comes in wing key, wing keyless, and HHKB bottom row for some reason. Uh, it's simple, seven degree angle board, and you've got lots of very, very nice color options like dark red, green, stuff like that. Unfortunately, the unit that we have here is black. So anyway, let's get into it. Here she is. Before we get into it, I have attempted to clean this many, many times, and it is just uncleanable because I have terrible, sweaty hands, and every single keyboard maker knows not to send me a black board. Now, I had seen uh, the IC for this, and immediately after seeing the IC, I went out and requested a review unit of this because, come on, it's an 1800. I love 1800. And I went through all the color options. I'm like, wow, there's a lot of color options. There's like, uh, there's like a, uh, a beige eco. There's like a nice deep red that kind of looks brown. There's a nice dark green. I was like, wow, there's a lot of color options. Just send me whatever. They sent me black. Congratulations. Uh, this is after multiple attempts at cleaning this. And uh, yeah, at this point, I've just given up hope. All right, uh, disclosure, uh, this keyboard was sent to me for free. I do not get to keep it for free. If I want to keep it, I have to pay full value for it or return the keyboard, just like any other keyboard review. Uh, nobody has any input on this. This channel has no sponsors, and this channel is financed and supported exclusively by viewers like you. So let's get started. Uh, unboxing experience. It comes in a box. You don't get a hard case. You just get a box. Uh, the box has some instructions in it, which is kind of cool, I guess. Of course, those instructions. Uh, there's some foam that it, that is an optional add-on, uh, which, uh, yeah, maybe don't get that. What's the instructions? There's the instructions. There's the instructions. Uh, it's simple enough to where if you know how to build a keyboard, you can just glance at this and be like, ah, got it. All right, so when I originally got this board, I learned that uh, building it plateless was an option. So immediately, I was like, hey, I'm going to build this plateless. See, uh, silly me thought that plateless meant, you know, the PCB would mount to the case. Uh, it does not. Uh, place, plateless, map, uh, plateless works by having a piece of silicone. Uh, this one has been uh, destroyed by... Uh, <clears throat> someone but this would go under the pcb and then the pcb would sit on top of the silicone aka stack foam mount which is disappointing by the time i realized that it was stack mount i had already soldered everything so we just committed to it i do not recommend building this plateless i know that 1800 for me reminds me of the g80 1800 which is well known for being a plateless board with a very unique sound signature that a lot of people don't like but i am a big fan of so immediately the nostalgia in my eyes was like hey build it plateless simon so anyway that was a terrible mistake and we have rebuilt this with the aluminum plate all right 
So let's do a uh, little bit of a tour on the outside. Uh, this is a pre-production version. So there are a few small things that uh, will change if you buy this at group buy, which is available for sale now. And there is a link in the description, but watch the video to hear if I recommend this or not. All right, let's start off very simple. Layout wise, this is the win key version. There is a win keyless version as well that puts a blocker right here. This is one of the rare circumstances that uh, I will personally prefer a win key version to allow you to do 1.5U, 1.5U, 7U, 1.5, 1.5. It allows a cohesive bottom row. Uh, putting a blocker in there doesn't really work because none of the original G80 1800s actually had a blocker there. Uh, there's also the HHKB bottom row, which what are you doing, Step Pro, if you're getting one of those? All right, we have a module, and this module pops right off using magnets. I don't know how they work, but I, I like it. All right, we've got a solenoid module right there. It is a small solenoid, it's average size for a keyboard, but small overall. And there is a buzzer right there. And you have the option to switch between nothing, solenoid, and buzzer. Uh, I have been told by MM Studio that it is possible with some big science brain and running a wire somewhere in here uh, that you can get the buzzer and the solenoid working at the same time if you really hate your coworkers. So this thing pops right off. Uh, you can see here that without touching it, it kind of sits a little bit crooked and I have to push it in. Uh, this is something that is resolved on the final unit. So you don't have to deal with this. Only I have to deal with this. All right, next thing. Nom lock. Nom lock. Nom lock. Uh, unfortunately, this is also being fixed for the international or uh, public variant. So for those of you that want the nom lock, I'm very sorry. Only I get the nom lock. All right, let's have a quick look at the design. We've got a cherry front lip, fairly standard for a G80. Let's look at the uh, side profile first and get an idea of what it looks like. Oh, there we go. Very, very simple side profile. You've got the big foot. You've got a exaggerated seam top and bottom. It's nice to see a seamed keyboard. Again, this is based off a vintage board. So it's to be expected. The rear of the board, of course, has the removable module, as well as a space to put in your USB connector where your daughter board sits. And let's do our chunky big boy USB test. Fits just fine. So it passes the test. All right. Moving on to the bottom, we have two external brass weights. I mean, cool. I would have preferred just one singular weight, but you know, design aesthetic or something, I guess. Yeah. Uh, the board is very, very heavy. This particular, this particular one comes in at 4.4 kilos built. Now, going back to not having a hard case with something like this, there are boards that are designed for you to move around, you know, take to the office, take out, go for a brisk walk. This is not one of those keyboards. At 4.4 kilos, this is the kind of keyboard that the place where you unbox it and build it is where, where you're going to use it. And it's going to stay on your desk because it's too much of a pain to lift. All right. So generally, I would complain that there's no hard case, but for something like this, it's fine. Uh, the feet are quite large. They're 10 millimeter feet, uh, if I had to ballpark. And yeah, you've got all the screws on the bottom. None of that screwless nonsense that somebody is trying to push in our hobby, which I still don't understand why. Anyway, that is pretty much what's going on with the externals. Now, uh, generally, I talk about the finishing, but unfortunately, they sent me a black unit, which is black and is just destroyed with my fingerprints. 
and will always be destroyed with my fingerprints. So I guess this board is just ruined forever. All right, uh, this is a removable uh, badge, by the way. This is actually made out of brass, which is very cool. And uh, I think that's pretty much it for the externals. It's simple enough. The real good stuff is what's going on inside. So let's remove this module and try and get this thing apart. Uh, if I can find the correct size tool, uh, you are far too large. You are also far too large. You are tiny. You are also tiny. Yep. Now, uh, this board is gasket mount, so these are the only screws on the entirety of the case. Is it literally just going to be the last one I grab? If you voted yes, you are correct. All right, there. That's good enough. Now, while we go through and disassemble this, uh, you may not know this, but uh, one, Group Buy is live right now. Very cool. It's very rare when I actually get to put out a review video as a Group Buy is live. Thing number two, it is Thoctober. Happy Thoctober, everyone. And if you don't know what Thoctober is, I'm kind of surprised if you're watching one of my YouTube videos. Uh, Thoctober is the is the month of giving for the keyboard community. It's basically like keyboard Christmas, but without, you know, really expensive logistics because it's Christmas. Uh, if you'd like to know more about Thoctober, there is a link to the Discord in the description where you can learn all about Thoctober. Uh, one other thing that is to note that for Thoctober, uh, since we're all in the spirit of given, giving, pardon, uh, basically uh, all the income from uh, my YouTube, my Twitch, donations, uh, merch sales, uh, Amazon affiliate links, all that good stuff uh, gets uh, put into the Thoctober giveaway fund where uh, we will be able to finance giveaways for people. And this is something that we do every year. So if, if you want to get involved and you want to support people in the hobby that are not as well off as you may be, uh, consider checking out Thoctober. All right. Let's open this up. Uh, I do recall that the daughter board uh, cable is incredibly short and a pain in the ass to deal with, but let's get the top off. There we go. Oh. I lied. This is not gasket mount. This is top mount. I confused this with the other keyboard that I recently built. All right. Well, silly Simon lied to you again. All right, let's uh, let's check out the bottom first, and then we'll check out the top. So, bottom, we've got a huge honking weight right here. It uses, unfortunately, a ribbon cable, which, uh, as you can tell by the mini bends in it, uh, not a fan of ribbon cable. But hey, it is what it is. The bottom is very, very simple. It's just a single big chunk of aluminum. We've got alignment, uh, female alignment tabs here with the male alignment tabs uh, sitting on the top of the case. And we've got our screw taps. So we got four here, three there, that's seven screw taps. Nice. We've got the mounting point for our little module and Two magnets to do magnet stuff, I guess. Uh, the screws on this weight are very, very, very small, so I really don't want to take this off. But below this, there isn't much going on. There's a daughter board in there. Uh, as you can see right there, the daughter board sits right there. Simple enough. All right, let's have ourselves a look at the top. There it is with its nom lock and its glory. Let's undo the top mount screws just so you can get a good feel for how this is going to work. If you look very closely, you can see that the PCB, I know it's hard to see because it's black on black, but the PCB actually has little tabs on it that allow you to do PCB mount. See, unfortunately, the way that the PCB mount works is uh, it's not what you think. And I'll show you what I mean by that. All right, while we're unscrewing here, we can see the male alignment tabs that are on the top. There's only four of them. Uh, the rest of the case, top and bottom, are just flat, which is a perfectly fine way to do things. 
there are quite a few screws. Thankfully, there are no screws underneath the, uh, the, uh, hello, uh, the space bar stabilizer landing point, which is nice. So the screws are far to the right and far to the left of where the space bar sits, which cool, I guess. All right, there we go. We've got it off and let's just take a quick look at the top. All right. So what do we got? We've got little light pipes. This is made out of foam. So this is so there's not a huge amount of bleed in your indicators. Uh, thing number two is we can see that there are tiny, tiny, tiny little gaskets. Okay, they're tiny, tiny. Let me show you using the detective cam. See that tiny little gasket right there? See that tiny, tiny little gasket? It's very tiny. So I guess technically it is gasket mount. It is top mount, but this gives you a little bit of isolation between uh, the plate and the top case. Generally, this is something that historically does not lead to good sound, but in a case like this, remember that big boards, best boards, big boards sound good by default. It sounds pretty good, not complaining. Uh, besides that, we can see one, two, three more female alignment tabs, but these don't really match up with what's going on with the plate. They're just here for the memes, I guess. And yeah, that's it. We've got a solid amount of screw points. We got four on the bottom, four on the top. Again, no mount points anywhere near the space bar. The mount points are clean. The top mount feels good. And to be fair, the top mount feels better than top mount because I kept thinking this was gasket mount like an idiot. All right, let's get that over there and have ourselves a look at the plate PCB assembly. Now, I'm not going to go off and I'm not going to go and take a bunch of caps off because this is just a solid aluminum plate. There's no meme cuts. There's no nonsense. Each switch sits firmly and is supported from all four sides by the plate. Now, what I've got here. It's an aluminum plate, just making extra sure by biting it. Uh, polycarbonate plate and other plate options are available. Personally, I might go with polycarbonate on something like this as opposed to uh, aluminum because unfortunately, PCB mount, not really ideal with a board like this. So you definitely want a plate mount, top mount. And in the case of something like an 1800, you generally want a little bit more flex. So going with polycarbonate, solid deal. Uh, not much going on. Uh, the layout support on this pre-production version uh, locks me into a full-size plus, which is fixed, obviously, on uh, on the production version because who the hell is going to use a full-size plus on an 1800? Don't at me. All right, plate mount points are very very simple. They're not leaf spraying. They're they're not doing anything special. You know, they're just designed in a cool way that looks cool, but they are just very very simple top mount. All right, PCB. Now, again, so full size plus, full size plus, you can see that there's no space for a split plus here that is being resolved with the new version of the PCB. Uh, you can also see that uh, I have the uh, bridged wire of depression from uh, ruining one of my sockets. Uh, hopefully, this is something that is resolved in the international version. I don't have confirmation, uh, but what I can tell you is just be a little bit more careful than average when desoldering this. Uh, I may have hit it a little bit too hard with my, my big boy. But yeah, uh, ribbon cable here. We can see the controller here. Let's do a little bit of a close up on the controller, find out what this thing is running going to be upside down for sure. Come on, camera. Uh, I know how cameras work. All right, what are you? What is that? Does that say Gini? Gihi? Gehi? Gihihi? All right, so apparently this uses a controller that I have never heard of. Interesting. Very interesting. 
Uh, besides that, PCB is mostly fine with the exception of the fact that I managed to ruin a pad, which is generally difficult to do if you're, you know, experienced and being slightly careful and using the right tools. But I don't know. Maybe I got unlucky or maybe I just went a little bit too hard with the desoldering. Uh, overall, super clean. Nothing is labeled, which can be problematic, but just follow the general rule of thumb of put the switches in, put caps on the switches, set up your bottom row before soldering. That way you know what's going on. Uh, for those of you that are watching this, they're like, oh, that's not going to be a problem. I'm going to do hot swap. Please don't do hot swap. Not on a board like this. This is a vintage inspired board. Do yourself the favor and properly solder in a nice 1800 build. It's, it's something you truly deserve. Oh, Lord. All right. Uh, which one is three? That one is three. Wait, that one is four. That one is five. Uh, the, the, the fun of having a key set that uh, doesn't use real numbers or letters. Anyway, that's the internal assembly. And let's, let's, talk about, let's talk about sound, feel, build suggestions, all that delicious goodness. All right. Oh, prior to that, let me, uh, there's one thing I forgot, and that is to show you how the uh, PCB mount works. So if you look at this little mounting point here on the PCB, it looks like, oh, you could just screw this into something. That's where you're wrong, kiddo. Uh, what they give you is a tiny little sock that goes on top of this. And that tiny little sock friction fits into these little channels. And basically what it does is your PCB basically just sinks into the bottom of the case and will short out on the brass. So you are forced to use your silicone bottom piece. So it doesn't feel bad, all right? The plateless mount does not feel bad, but it does not feel like a plateless build, all right? Nor does it sound like a plateless build because you got a huge hunk of that in it. So again, big recommendation. Please, 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 for the love of God, do top mount. Get yourself a nice flexi plate if you're trying to get some flex out of it, all right? Now, in terms of switches, uh, I have this built with whatever super cheap switches I was able to just like find at the bottom, the bottom of my switch drawer. I recommend using nice switches on this. I know, you guys are shocked. Uh, you can't go wrong with a full uh, nylon switch. So that's something like uh, full black cherries, full black Adirons, uh, JWK if you really want to. But I would go with a full nylon housing, palm stem. Uh, Get a little bit of lube in there. I wouldn't necessarily uh, be lubing switches to make them sound deeper because this is already a deep sounding board. And realistically with polycarbonate or, or whatever other plate option you want, even the aluminum plate in this sounds relatively deep. And the sound profile of the 1800, it sounds like an 1800. It's boomy. There's a lot of internal volume, which is a good thing. That's how you want an 1800 to sound. So uh, I have random PBT caps on this. Uh, would I go ABS? Yeah, I, I briefly tried ABS on this. It felt pretty good. Uh, it sounded pretty good. ABS PBT, not really going to make a difference. Thankfully, this board has enough going on and has enough internal and external brass and enough internal surface area to just sound like a nice boomy board pretty much whatever you put in it uh maybe try milky tops if you want to just bump up the boominess a little bit but most people for most people i'd recommend just a full nylon switch no milky top no nonsense uh put in whatever you want to put in if you're going to go with something like uh, polycarbonate or a nice flexi plate go for some tactiles you know if there are good mx tactiles that you like even though there are no good MX tactiles. Uh, yeah, those are my, uh, those are my recommendations. Uh, I'll show you guys a, uh, I'll show you guys two sound tests. The, uh, first sound test will be, uh, with it plateless in the original build configuration, uh, that I had it built with. And the, uh, second one will be in its current state, uh, top mounted with an aluminum plate. And, uh, I'll also let you hear the solenoid and the buzzer. And after that, uh, summary time.
Summary time. All right, class 1800. Now, MM Studio historically has made good boards for a good price. And this is absolutely one of those boards. Uh, the only inherent problem with this board is some of us that would have liked to build it plateless don't really have that option because of the way the plateless implementation has been done. So unfortunately, this is going to have to be a board, at least under my recommendation, that you only top mount. You plate mount it and you get yourself a nice polycarbonate or aluminum plate, whatever you're into. Uh, I think the value is absolutely there. I think that the solenoid and buzzer are amazing. Are they the best solenoid or the best buzzer I've ever heard? No, but they're good. They're good enough and they're loud enough to where you will absolutely get fired from your day job within 15 minutes of typing on this thing. And if that's what you're after, I strongly advise that you buy one of these keyboards. Uh, links will be in the description for actually buying it. You can buy it now. And I kind of recommend you do if you're into 1800, you're into big boards and you want to get a nice nearly four and a half kilo 1800 that will just ruin everybody else's day, go for it. I would absolutely go for it. Uh, as for me, I, <clears throat> I'm still debating on whether or not I will pay to keep this keyboard, but, uh, we'll see. I am a sucker for big boards. And I cannot lie. And this one has the uh, ultra rare nom lock. Uh, if uh, you didn't watch the review to find out all about the nom lock, I don't know what to tell you. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you enjoy uh, keyboard content and you want to see more keyboard review content like this, maybe subscribe, drop a like, tell me in the comments, what is your favorite type of linguine? And as always, if you do want to support the channel financially, uh, as this channel, is transparent and has no sponsors uh there is, there will be a link to patreon on the eggplant you'll see the eggplant just press the eggplant thank you for watching and i've got something real interesting to show you in the next video i'm not saying that this is not real interesting but something spicy thanks for watching bye bye hmm Yeah, it's not bad. They're oxide-coated stainless steel screws that uh, are ferrous, which is nice. It's nice to see ferrous screws. Uh, the plate screws and the case assembly screws uh, all use the exact same uh, uh, hex 2. Is it a 2? Yes, it is a hex 2. So uh, I'll give the screws a solid 8.1 out of 10. I give up.